Hello, Konnichiwa, it's Kei, and I'm a pro trader and also a Forex mentor based in Tokyo, Japan. And as I've been announced, in this month of December, I'll be talking about moving average. And as you can see here, there will be total 8 videos on every Monday and every Thursday, and they are all based on the questions and comments from all different traders. So I would like to say thank you for those who have been sending me those questions. I've got uh, 35 comments in total and I created the videos all based on your comments. So I really appreciate your help and support to get me going. So here is a resume or the course syllabus of a month. Let me go through real quick so that you know what you can expect to learn about uh, moving average this month. Today on part 1, I will be talking about the traits of the moving average and I will introduce the kind of moving average like uh, there are several kinds to it so I will touch on that and also the weak point of the moving average like you cannot always trust the signals provided by moving average so you know there are pros and cons on any indicators and this is also the one so I will be talking about the weak point of the moving average so that you know in what condition you should not use this one, right? So that's going to be today's topic as part one. So if you like this topic already, make sure to click the like button, okay? All right, on the next part two, I will be talking about how, like how you can actually use this indicator for your trades as trading signals. I will touch on some basic strategies like gold cross, dead cross, and what we call perfect order. And if you run these, then you know exactly how to trade with the moving average. And that's gonna be part two, and it's coming on the fifth Thursday. And part three is going to be when, like the focus is going to be when, when you can trade or not with moving average. I will introduce my own techniques to identify when to trade or not. And this is going to be identified by looking at different time frame charts. I will teach you how to synchronize the bigger time frame and smaller time frames and teach you when exactly you should trade or not. And from part 4 to part 7, I will be explaining about the practical use of the moving average from some real charts. And finally on part 8, I will teach you another technique to identify the edge on the market from a triangle formation formed by the candlesticks and also the moving average. This is a very powerful technique, so if you master this, I'm sure your trades should improve a lot better than before. So December is going to be a month of moving average. You know, this indicator is very very famous among all the traders, so perhaps you might already be using this indicator. So I'm hoping that as you watch the videos in December, you obtain some correct understandings and also some new strategies by using the indicator and eventually to make profit out from the market. So if you don't want to miss the series of videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you receive a notification as I keep uploading the videos. Also, you will get notified as I do the live streamings on every Tuesdays and Friday, so you can join there too. Alright, so let's get into the moving average part 1 right now. So before starting, everybody might have different understandings or perspectives about moving average. So let me ask you one simple question. What is the moving average? And what is it for? What is it really for? Well, when I ask this question, I can hear some different answers. I can hear like, it's for identifying the trend. Like when it's moving up, it's the uptrend. And when it's going down, it's the downtrend. Um, do you agree with that definition? Well, that's correct in a way, but it's not the perfect answer because there are more information that you can get from this indicator. Basically, there are three kinds of information you can get. First one is the market direction, the market trend, like I heard it earlier. And the second information is the strength of the trend. And the third one is the break-even point of the market. 
uh, whether it's the simple moving average or exponential or weighted moving average or whatever basically you get these three information about the market from this moving average indicator now let me introduce the kinds of the moving average first like i just mentioned there are three kinds of moving average simple moving average and exponential moving average and weighted moving average However, I'm not going into details about these because I want to go into some of the practical use on this video. So just touching on the difference briefly here. A uh, simple moving average is like you take the closing price of a certain time period, add them up and divide the number by a period of time. So let's say when it's a moving average with the time period of 10. You take all the closing price of the past 10 candlesticks, add them up, and divide the sum by 10. Then you plot the number on the current candlestick. And that's the simple moving average. And it tells you the market direction, but uh, relatively slower than other two moving averages. However, uh, slow doesn't mean it's bad. It gives you more concrete signal than exponential and weighted. And I will touch on that later. But let's go to the exponential next. Exponential moving average puts more weight on the prices of the most recent candlesticks than the simple moving average. As for the calculation, you can go onto the Google and search for it. But for now, just remember that it's weighted on the recent price actions than simple moving average. And that means it reacts quicker than the simple moving average. Now, there's another famous moving average, and it's the weighted moving average. And this is even more weighted than the exponential moving average, so it reacts even more quickly than the exponential moving average. However, because it reacts very quickly, it tends to give you more fake signals on the market. So the best way to know the difference on these three kinds of moving averages is to see it visually. So for example, look at this chart. The difference will look like this. In this chart, it shows the simple, exponential, and weighted moving averages with the same time period. And look how they react differently on the market. As you can see this visually here, the simple moving average is reacting slower than other two moving averages. Uh, personally, I use SMA, simple moving average, and EMA, exponential moving average usually, but not weighted moving average because uh, weighted moving average reacts too fast to the market and if you are still a newbie, you might get lots of fake signals and get lost, especially when the market is volatile. So personally, I recommend to use either simple moving average or exponential to check and see the overall market direction. Also, you can change the time period however you like on this indicator. Well, on Ichimoku Kinko Hyo, for example, basically it's fixed in numbers like 9 or 26, right? But on this moving average, you can set the time period however you like. And that's why I got messages like, what time period do I need to set it up to get it work and give me the correct signals on the market? I've received a couple of questions from different traders like that, but let me tell you, unfortunately, there's no perfect time period to set it up to give you the perfect signals. So rather than looking for the perfect setup, think like this. Think, how should I set it up? I mean, the moving average is to know the market direction and its strength, right? So think, how can I set it up to see the market trend and strength? Like I said, moving average basically gives you three information the market trend, the market strength, and the break-even point. So thinking how can I set it up to get those information from the market would be the correct way of questioning yourself. So let me tell you one of the ways to do it. Look at this diagram. This is a diagram that shows you the basic standard setup to see the direction, strength, and the break-even point in short-term, mid-term, and long-term in the market. For example, as it says here, for a short time period, you can set the MA with 10 or 20 time period. 
Well, some traders use like 21 or 25, but I think it's just a minor difference. The point here is the number should be small, like anywhere between 10 to 20 to take the market momentum in short term. And if you want to see it in the midterm, the time period will be like 75 or 100, and long term will be with a 200 time period. So if you want to see the market direction strengths and break even points in different time periods, you can show like 10 as a short term, 75 as a mid term, and 200 as a long term momentum. I personally use 3 moving averages with 20, 75, and 200 EMA, but again, you can just change whatever you like. And as it says here, 200 is the most reliable in long term, uh, meaning if you want to see the market momentum in whatever time frame you're looking at, whether it's a daily, or 1 hour, or 5 minute chart, or whatever, 200 MA shows the most reliable information in terms of the market direction, strength, and the break even point within the same time frame chart you're looking at. And by combining these three moving averages, you can get three different aspects on the market, which I'll be talking deeper on the part two. So here is the pros and cons of moving average in one glance. And as it shows here, basically the smaller the time period it becomes, the more the fakes will appear on the chart and the less the reliability to the market trend it becomes. In contrast, the bigger the time period it becomes, the less the fakes will appear on the chart, and the more the reliability to the market trend it becomes. And midterm is simply somewhere in the middle. So how I use this indicator is like, uh, rather than just placing one moving average, I show three moving averages on the chart to take trades by following the major trend, which is the long term trend, 200 MA. And when I was still a newbie, uh, to forex trading, it was the most effective way. So for example, when the long term 200 MA shows bullish, then you just wait until the mid term and short term MAs also becomes bullish. You know, ideally, when you look at a chart, in whatever time frames, when you look at a chart, and when 200 MA is moving up, ideally, the mid term and short term also should be moving up to get ready to place a buy on the market because that means the major trend is bullish. And sometimes there are times when uh, 75 MA and 20 MA are interacting with each other with the candlesticks. And in that case, it's not really a good timing for your entry. So when long term 200 MA is pointing up, the mid term and short term MAs also should be pointing upwards because when they are pointing down, that means the market might be in the middle of a pullback. So you better wait until these two MAs, 75 and 20, like mid-term and short-term MAs pointing upwards. Then look for the perfect entry timing to place a buy by looking at the price actions, which I will be covering deeper on the next part two. So that's it for the part one. And again, on the next one, part two, I'll be talking about the further details on the trading strategies, like how you can take trades by gold cross or dead cross or perfect orders. So if you don't want to miss the next one, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. And also, if you thought today's video was helpful, please kindly press a good button too. So I will see you on the next one. Stay gold. Mata ne.